Hi, I'm Blythe Stevens of Abe Life Coach, dance education and coaching to move through life with balance, grace, and power. Today we're getting a little bit more conceptual. We're going to talk about the planes of space in the body. So this is sort of the bridge, the intersection between our understanding of the body and our alignment and the larger space around us. So these same terms that I'm going to teach today are used for dance, for ballet instruction many times, as well as a general study of the human body, for medical study, and as well as uh, human psychology and understanding body language and um, some of these emotional associations between our posture and our movement and what message is coming across to the world. So it's got a lot of interesting facets to it. There's functional and expressive and it's going to be really juicy for us today. Oh, I have brought all kinds of goodies with me today. I usually try not to load up my lessons and my conversations with too many sources, but I do want to bring this with me just to show um, the number of sources that are all utilizing this information and referring to it and so we can understand why do we want to learn this and how is it going to be useful in my practice. This is all part of my longer series on the elements of the body and how we use this for movement. Description, analysis, criticism, creativity, choreography, and understanding. So if you're following along with me, this wonderful resource is certainly available online as well. And we've talked a little bit about the body, although of course with dance and yoga, we'll always be going back to the body. A little bit about the systems of the body and how to create an internal sense of connection and core support. And now we're moving to the interface between the systems of the body and then also the space. So namely the planes and dimensions of space. The first half is an awesome text used by every medical training that I know of and human biology study as well as my graduate school kinesiology for dancers course and that is the anatomy coloring book. So this is my beautiful colored rendition of their understanding of the planes of the body. So you can see how the body is divided into sections or theoretical imaginary sections. They also have this beautiful yoga, yoga anatomy 3D book, which is in German, but they have a lot of basic anatomical information. And there's a beautiful full color description here of the planes of the body as well. We can use them to describe our posture and improve our posture as well as our movement possibility. Another favorite anatomic text that pertains to movement and yoga is Anatomy of Hot Yoga. And in this book, there is, once again, a basic introduction to the planes of the body right here. And because it is a scientific text and meant to describe in ways that are understandable, testable, um, and thereafter uses all this terminology to help understand our posture and the poses and the movements that we're making. So one example of this is in tree pose with two variations. Through our understanding of the planes of the body and the plumb line, we can see variations in our posture depending on how we arrange the parts of body around the center line. The Le Bon movement analysis understanding of the planes of the body and space is nicely outlined by Peggy Hackney in another one of my favorite movement books, Making Connections. And I will also quote what is said because I think it's really a helpful description, but through this understanding of the way the planes in the body and in space interact, we end up with a thoroughly geometric, even crystalline image. 
And this is also reflected in the way we understand space and ballet, which I'll go into in future installments. Here is that crystalline structure that emerges from documenting and understanding space in the body in this way. Our world has three cardinal dimensions. Each dimension contains two directions that are opposite poles. Vertical, which has up and down. Sagittal, which has forward and backwards. And horizontal, left and right, or sideward open and sideward closed. Movement in the three planes is movement that invests in two spatial poles at the same time. For instance, up and left in the vertical plane. Each plane is like a flat cycle or a rectangle. The vertical plane combines. The median plane is the midline longitudinal plane dividing the head and torso into right and left halves. The presence of the section midline of the vertebral column and the spinal cord is characteristic of this plane. The median plane is the middle sagittal or mid-sagittal plane. The sagittal plane is a longitudinal plane dividing the head and torso into the left and right parts. It is parallel to the median plane. The coronal or frontal plane is a longitudinal plane dividing the body, its parts, into front and back halves or parts. The transverse plane divides the body into upper and lower parts or cross sections. It is perpendicular to the longitudinal planes. Transverse planes may be horizontal planes on the upright body. Transverse planes are called axial or transaxial sections or slices by radiologists. Regarding the sagittal plane, Rory Foster in the book Ballet Pedagogy adds, the sagittal plane is a vertical line that symmetrically bisects the body into right and left halves. When viewed from the front with the feet in first position, this line runs from the top of the head through the center of the body ending between the heels the base of support for the evenly distributed gravitational weight of the body. The spatial dimensions in movement are height and depth as in a forward bend or back bend or a somersault forward or backward. This is why we also call the sagittal plane the wheel plane. If we move or roll forwards or backwards, we are moving through the sagittal plane. Here is the sagittal or wheel plane. Notice that my center of gravity must shift as I move my weight from two feet onto one, or as I move from first position to third position, second position. Of the coronal plane, ballet pedagogy adds, the coronal vertical plane is a vertical line that divides the body into front and back parts. When viewing this line from a profile position with the feet in parallel, it runs from the top of the head just in front of the ear, continuing through the pelvis, hip joint, knee, and into the metatarsal or transverse arch in the front of the ankle. The spatial dimensions in movement are height and width as in a stretch or a combre to the side or a cartwheel. The coronal vertical or frontal plane is also called the door plane, as one is in this plane when standing in a doorway or while gesturing or moving to the side. So here is our vertical frontal or door plane. In this plane, I can move to the side in any of the ways that we know. The coronal and sagittal planes together establish the central vertical axis, also referred to as the line of gravity or the plumb line. 
And this plumb line is indicated with my lovely plumb line tool here. Of the horizontal or transverse plane, ballet pedagogy says, it divides the body into upper and lower halves. The spatial dimensions in movement are width and depth or rotation, as in a pirouette or a fouetté turn. The transverse or horizontal plane is also known as the table plane. As when we move or gesture in this plane, it is as if across a tabletop. The point at which all three planes cross each other is the center of gravity. The imaginary point in the body where all parts of the body balance each other. This is located just below the navel at the body's midline and anterior to the second sacral vertebra. Lastly, we have the horizontal or the transverse plane and that meeting point between all three planes are center of gravity. Ballet pedagogy helps put all these concepts together into practice. Correct posture and placement also require elongation through the legs and torso by means of lengthening and stretching. This is universally known and often understood as pull-up. Elongating the body raises the center of gravity by raising it, we increase the distance from our center of gravity and our base of support on one or two feet. It is done by lengthening and stretching the spinal column, thereby elongating the spine's natural curves. This causes diminished stability, but enables a greater mobility, allowing the dancer to move with speed, lightness, and grace. The diminished stability factor is overcome by years of muscular development and control by refining technique. The oppositional forces should be felt with elongation, raising the center of gravity. There should be a sensation of pushing downward through the legs from the hip joints while lengthening and pulling up from the waistline. Upward elongation of the torso from the waist should be felt primarily in the spine the head, neck, shoulders, and arms should remain free of any tension. Maintaining the stance requires core abdominal strength, as well as control of the upper back and between the shoulder blades. Check out my video and podcast last week to learn more about this core support. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to planes of space as well as the dimensions and the relevance of those concepts to many different topics but particularly our understanding of posture and placement in ballet and dance. Thanks for joining me. If you did enjoy this, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel down below, click the notification bell to be notified of my videos as they do come out. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time.